1 Chapter 1 Synopsis and Prologue You are listening at FameTV.info Chapter 1 Synopsis and Prologue Translator Con Editor Elrian Synopsis, she was once a shut that I n Korean girl, given the chance to change her life. And was born again as Julieta, an illegitimate child of Marquis Anais. She was then kicked out of the house with her mother, Stella, by the tyranny of the Marquise when she was still a child. The ousted Stella and Julieta headed to the theater on Herod Street, where Stella had made her name as an actress, and their Julieta must grow up in this new world, survive, and hopefully thrive as she weaves her way out of poverty, and into contact with some of the most powerful and handsome nobles in the country, all the while trying to stay out of their hands. A romance novel from Korean author, Habin Chai, brought to you by Khan and Elrianth, translator and editor of the Korean novels The First Hunter, 12 Hours After, and When I Woke Up, The World Turned Into a Video Game, should post two chapters per day, at least, that's the plan. A breathless moan echoed through the wide room, and the insignificant movement of a man and a woman reflected in the moonlight was visible beyond the shimmering curtain. Unlike the man who did not even make a sound of breathing in spite of his violent actions, the screams of the woman beneath him showed how much she liked it, Julieta, who had to stand in the corner holding her breath at the repeated sounds that began again once it was over, began to get irritated, hey, don't overdo it, but call me when it's over. This is a freaking thing for a person to stand up, she was hot in her dress, thick with cotton under her maiden suit, and the strange smell of the room was choking her. Is it over? The man's movement stopped, and then he seemed to be falling from her body, and she was seen over the thick cloth in the dim light. With no time to prepare, the bed's curtain, which lay on one side of the room as big as the playground, was thrown back and a tight, muscular body appeared, oh, that exposure. No matter how good it is, you have to cover it up. Oh, I'm embarrassed. Your Highness, where are you going? Ah, the night is still long. She must be a woman of considerable physical strength. Unlike most women who usually fainted at the end, the woman whined and struggled to bring the man back to her side, the man, who was heading to the bathroom in his naked body without even a gown, saw me standing in the corner and ordered. Let her out. Yes, I should. I've been waiting here for hours to do that. Yes, your highness. After turning on the light in the room at the man's knife dot like command, Julietta suddenly approached the bed and handed a gown to a woman of ample figure, naked and covered only by a thin sheet, slap, Julietta was slapped across her face suddenly, but she didn't know what kind of sin she had committed. She was bewildered by the woman who slapped her as if she had been waiting for the man to disappear into the bathroom. However, as she was educated, she held out the gown again without changing her expression. You have to leave the room before your highness comes out. Please get up. You are presumptuous. Who are you to tell me to leave? I'll wait until his highness comes out. Get out of the way. There was no woman who went well. Your highness hates when an order is not fulfilled. Will you leave, or will I have to bring servants in? The woman who sat on the bed with her tumbling brown hair stretched to her waist, rose coldly and snatched away the gown as Julietta turned and headed for the door. On the day I formally become a concubine of His Highness, I'll never let you off, so you'd better be prepared. Upon seeing the woman's sensual figure disappear into the gown, Julietta quickly opened the door and summoned the waiting servant of the prince. It's been about five minutes since His Highness went into the bathroom. I'll start with the bed. Julietta spoke bluntly to the servant, who was glancing at the back of Viscountess. As the servant in a neat uniform headed quickly to the bathroom to draw the prince's bath, Julietta began to work at a frightening pace. She hurriedly opened the window, and vented the strange smell in the room. As she took off the sheets, she took out the new sheets from the closet and changed them like lightning, sweat dripping down, snap, the bathroom door opened and this time the man with a proper gown came out. At the sight, Julietta breathed a sigh of relief. She rolled up her striped sheets, bowed her head, and stepped back to the door. Get me tea. Yes, your highness. The man's order was given to Julietta, 
who was about to walk out of the room with the sheets, as if he had no intention of waiting for his servant, who had not yet come out of the bathroom. Julietta knew that orders should be done right away, but she, with the bedspread in her hands, sought permission from her master. Can I put out a bedspread? I don't mind, but wouldn't you be a little embarrassed? The man's expression slightly distorted when she carefully held out the bedspread in the spirit of humanity, when Julietta noticed his eyes glancing silently, she opened the door promptly and threw the bedspread into the hallway. Then, she quickly approached the tea set in the corner of the drawing dot room to prepare the tea, after having sex, which was once or twice a week, the man liked to enjoy during tea without exception. When Julietta quickly brewed tea and put it on the table. The man who casually wore the gown sat comfortably on the sofa and raised himself up to pick up the glass, Huck, come on. The gown's about to come off. Uh dot huh, can't you squeeze your legs, fearing that his gown would be torn off, Julietta turned her eyes hastily, and went to the designated seat in the corner of the room again, where she stood still, lowering her eyes. As soon as Julietta stood by the wall, the servant came out of the bathroom and stood mutely beside her, frowning and looking at her. He seemed to be reprimanding her for not being able to follow him directly into the bathroom because of the delay in getting out the owner's new woman, when Julietta casually shrugged her shoulders as if she had no choice, the sound of the servant clicking his tongue sounded small. She ignored him as she held back what she wanted to say. That he would have been less scolded if he had gone straight into the bathroom without being distracted by the prince's lover, when the man who was enjoying the tea got up without a word, Julietta almost cried out of, thinking that she could finally rest. The man threw off his gown and went to bed. She bent and unfolded her swollen legs slightly and waited for the man to fall asleep, the man lying on the bed ordered her to step outside as she prayed earnestly. Hushabai, your highness. Go to sleep. Let me get some rest after carefully putting out the light in the room, Julietta gently inhaled as soon as she closed the bedroom door. The sheets thrown out of the prince's room had already been removed and the hall was quiet without any indication of another person being around, unlike the servant, who was sleeping in a room next to the prince, Julietta moved toward the quarters of the maids on the fourth floor. As she walked into a small room right next to the stairs on the fourth floor and lay down on the bed, she let out a long sigh at the thought that the hard day was over. It had been three months since she had entered the private mansion of Prince Killian Michael Hay de Ford Bertino Austern, second in line to the throne of the Austern Empire. It was because of her purely indifferent personality that she became a maid in charge of cleaning after she entered the position of the direct maids of the noble prince. For another reason, such people were often replaced. Listen to the full novel at fametv.info, direct link in the description.